So, um, welcome everybody. Um, uh, I am here today um, uh, with um, Penny Van Escott, and she is a um, retired anthropologist from York University, and she's a founder of WABA, and also Michelle Pensabanco, who um, is an IBCLC public health um, advocate and a, um, a co-founder of Safely Fed Canada. So today we're going to be talking about uh, um, green feeding uh, because this week is World Breastfeeding Week and um, the theme of World Breastfeeding Week is support to breastfeeding for a healthier planet. So I'm going to start with you, um, uh, Penny, if you'd like to share um, about green feeding so that we've got an idea of what uh, um, this really is about. Well, it's a very simple concept, really, because uh green feeding is just the WHO and the UNICEF definition of optimal infant feeding practices, you know, exclusive breastfeeding for six months and adding complementary local sustainable household foods and continuing with breastfeeding. But what makes green feeding uh, a little different and, and a, a reason why we want to label it and stick on buttons like breastfeeding is green because um, lots of people don't recognize that breastfeeding is simply the most environmentally friendly way to feed, uh, to feed a baby. And um, they don't realize, they don't think about the environmental costs of the use of infant formula. So by emphasizing a phrase like green feeding or sustainable green feeding, um, it's just reminding mothers how much they're really doing to support the planet and not just the health of their own infants. It, that's, a, a, that's a really uh, great, a great way of explaining it. So um, we know um, breastfeeding um, is green, breastfeeding is good for the environment. Um, and, um, and so therefore, if I was to ask you, Michelle, from a public health um, perspective, um, how do you see um, the importance of um, green feeding currently um, and for the potential future? Well, I think I think Penny put really succinctly why this this concept has emerged as a separate concept because I think it's an area that lots of times when we talk about breastfeeding, we focus on the individual health of that individual. You know, parent, baby, and their and their and their family unit, but really, breastfeeding is also a community good. It's also a community obligation uh, to that mother and baby uh, pair. So, one of the things um, that we think about lots on the emergency side is the impacts of um, environmental de degradation to the severity of uh, emergencies and disasters. So, things like deforestation, droughts. Um, all sorts of climate change more generally are all Im all impact uh, the number and the severity of emergencies that we have in a community. But when a community experiences an emergency and we're all experiencing that on a global basis, and which is pretty unique right now, those babies who are breastfed and fed, as, as uh, Penny points out, local, sustainable, um, traditional foods within their community are much in a much safer, more food secure position. And from a public health perspective, keeping those babies food secure increases not just the food security of their family unit, but also of their whole community, because babies who are well fed and thriving don't need as much help from us so we can focus on other things. Um, and they need less health care, they need less less supports in all kinds of different ways. Um, the other piece, I think, from an emergency public health perspective is um, people who haven't really seen emergency situations don't realize how much extra garbage and, and just uh, litter is involved in any kind of emergency situation. Um, if you've ever walked through a refugee camp or an internally displaced uh, people's camp, you can just see like the amount of disposable stuff that people gather and then have to get rid of is huge. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a baby who, who's not exclusively breastfed is is producing a lot of those things, mm -hmm. a lot of extra garbage, um, as well as using lots of extra resources. So um, I think some of us probably have a better idea of that just from seeing the amount of 
of trash and litter that's happening in many of our communities through this disaster period. People are using lots more disposable stuff. Um, they don't have places to dispose of it properly. So that's one of the pieces from a, from a more general community perspective that really happens in an emergency situation that we might not be aware of. So um, breastfeeding, you know, produces food security for the family unit but also it produces security and and, and safety for the whole community at large mm, yeah that's a really important point penny would you like to add something there yeah i'm i'm thinking uh, i was very much involved in the first nestle boycott because mm. of the conditions of uh, the promotion of infant formula and all those sorts of things and now i've moved to guelph and i'm finding the same company is using the same tactics um, around water mm -hmm. and I think um, green feeding also links to water advocacy because of course a breastfed baby and a mixed fed baby and a baby fed with infant formula all have different water needs and they all have different impacts on uh, water and of course that connects with the emergency situation and um, I think that uh, I think that we need as many allies as we can in this struggle to make sure infants are fed well and, and breastfeeding is supported. And I, I think some of the water advocates will be e extremely important. Water is, of course, something that's um, very much affected by climate change, it's implicated in emergencies, and lots of people still think that a breastfed baby has to be fed something like bottled water or give it a drink because it's hot and and there we go again with plastic bottles supplied mm -hmm. by the same company providing more garbage yeah I, I think that's one of the things um because all of us um have a fairly uh, international perspective and are in contact um uh, with colleagues from around the world often um and i'm thinking of in um uh, with a good friend of ours um uh, and that was um, one of the things on the beaches with her children um just walking along and seeing the the rubbish the garbage just washing up on the beach um and so often it's related to infant feeding um, products so um you know it's not just impacting um you know uh it, it's actually impacting um globally very um you know uh, very strongly whereas we perhaps in um uh, our local country of Canada don't necessarily see what that massive impact is um, and what what garbage or rubbish looks like to a degree um, and yes as you were saying both of you related to to water uh, water security um, you know um, the the packaging that comes along with everything else that's there um, and we've for a long time been talking about that you know breastfeeding is environmentally friendly um, yet it's been it, it seems that the campaign as far as uh, supporting climate change and supporting the environment there seems to have forgotten that breastfeeding uh, which is which is probably the very first step that anybody can ever take um, uh, to support the environment will make a huge difference in the world and so I, I think it's uh, this year's theme, you know, supporting breastfeeding for a, uh, a healthier planet um, says a lot. Um, but you're right, Penny, we have to connect with other groups out there. Um, and it has to be um, a way of just simply saying we have to stop. We have to stop and think um, before we're putting out all this extra um, rubbish into the environment. And it's not saying that we're not, you know, we need to be supporting breastfeeding families and we need to be supporting all families. Um, those that, if, if, if breastfeeding is not going well, um, we need to take responsibility because their support system hasn't been put in place. So, um, and it's not the solution to be jumping in and saying, oh, here, here's just a, um, you know, a, a, a bottle of formula or something else that comes in. Um, we as health professionals need to be able to stand up and say we have a responsibility because and that's our responsibility to actually be supporting the families and we've got to be aware that that's what's going to make a difference for a healthier planet so mm -hmm. um, is there any other messages you'd like to share um before we close up here i am going to take one step up and i'm going to show my t-shirt because it's a really important t-shirt so that everyone gets to see it and you know basically it says breastfeeding is environmentally friendly 
And this is a very old T-shirt. So we've been talking about this for a very long time. Okay. Any last words, Penny and Michelle? My only last word is I wish I'd worn some of my funky <laughs> T-shirts because uh, one of them celebrates uh, breastfeeding as women's work. And uh, one of them is uh, celebrating breastfeeding as a feminist issue. So <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and I do feel, I, I think we have to watch the phrase, um, breastfeeding is natural, yeah. because that makes a woman feel really weird if she has problems, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a holistic part of nature, and it's mm -hmm. one that's just easily forgotten, even food security, people tend to, to really think in terms of adult males, so... Mm. I really like the idea of, of uh, it, it's a jargon, but green feeding gets our attention. Yes. It reminds us how much we're really doing for the planet yes. when we feed our infants in a sustainable way. Thank you, Penny. Michelle? Yeah, I mean, I think I think I, I just wanted to, to echo what Penny said around the issue of, of big companies using the same tactics mm. in each of these areas. And they use them in, you know, sugar sweetened beverages, they use them in infant formula and baby foods, they use them in water. Um, I, when we were doing the screening of the Tigers film, which talks about Nestle's actions uh, in uh, Pakistan around infant formula, we were chatting with, that was when I first had contact with, with the folks who do water advocacy here in, in uh, Southern Ontario. And so the person sat down with me and she explained to me how big companies bring bottled, donate bottled water into emergencies, which takes the onus off the governments and authorities to, to offer clean water systems to the, to the people who are affected. And then the emergency is over, the government people go away, people are now dependent on bottled water. Yeah. And I, and so she was telling us, and I was like, yeah, I am familiar with that process. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think You've we- have heard it before. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard this story before, you should probably come see the, the film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think that one of the things that we really need to remember is we have a big, broad world of consumer advocacy mm -hmm. um, and that breastfeeding fits in within that and that, that uh, you know, the concept of green feeding helps us to make those connections and to, to, yeah. to uh, join those things together. And I really, I encourage people to think about that way um, and uh, to really spend time building those relationships because we have lots, of, lots to learn in the breastfeeding advocacy world mm -hmm. around uh, making it a consumer issue making it a public health issue as opposed to um, playing in playing into the hand of industry around personal choice narratives and, and stories um, yeah. and we see that during COVID the, during the pandemic because uh -huh. the infant formula industry is making hay with mm. the fears and worries of parents globally and yeah. there have been several reports that are just absolutely sickening to think um, that in the middle of a, an infectious disease outbreak that's global, infant formula companies are um, trying to improve their bottom line on the backs of uh, babies and their parents. So mm -hmm. I uh, encourage people to really make those connections. Go and ahead, Penny. One thing I, that I've been really shocked at in the COVID discussions, uh, when we talk about separating mothers and babies at birth, you know, we know how uh, what a bad idea that is, but we're not really stressing that that act of breastfeeding is the act which creates the immunity, which protects the baby from COVID now, but also helps it build an immune system, which will be um, strengthening that baby and that adult for future, uh, to deal with future epidemics mm -hmm. and you don't hear that very much so we're just reminding your listeners that uh, you know there's a few more conversations and questions that we should be having and we should be adding into the COVID and the breastfeeding discussions yeah 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 I agree um, I want to thank you both so much. It's been always lovely chatting. Um, uh, I, I like doing these little sessions because it gives us an opportunity just to hear different perspectives. And I think this year with the uh, with the World Breastfeeding Week 2020, um, the theme of, you know, um, supporting breastfeeding for a healthier planet, particularly with COVID-19 um, yeah. as part of all of this, it just mainly 
puts back the focus um, of, you know, it is so important for us to be supporting breastfeeding and green feeding um, is doing this. It's doing what the theme um, for World Breastfeeding Week is. And again, thank you both so much for joining me today. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. And I hope we can talk again, maybe about some of the other topics, um, Penny, that you were mentioning. <laughs> that would be great. All of Penny's t-shirts. Oh yeah, we okay. all have to get the t-shirts. Yes. <laughs> okay. get a button. Thanks. And yeah. a button. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs>